The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue seas Fields of green and sandy yellow beaches too The island also has loads of trains and railway lines But who's that? Just puffing round the track It's a tank engine that in his name told us he will keep you to me Friends working together to make anything just work Cause when an obstacle comes along A train wreck makes it worthless When friendship and teamwork is on your side Nothing's impossible with Thomas and his friends Over the years, the island of Sodor has seen many engines coming and going. Some are big, some are small, some are steam engines, some are diesels, but all of them are really useful engines. One morning, it was a busy day. Henry pulled freight. Gorton pulled the express. And Percy was taking trucks of steel to the special workshop where Finn was working. But today he was late. Peter the art manager was there. He was very cross. You're late again, Percy, he snapped. I will have to speak to the fat controller. Percy was upset. Then he saw Finn. Maybe one of Finn's cool guys will cheer me up, he thought to himself. What are you built today, Finn? he asked. It's my time travel train whistle, replied Finn proudly. I was about to lock it in my safe with most of my dangerous inventions. Like, for example, the suit you'd blow up. Diesel 10 blew it up, remember? replied Percy. Then, an idea flew into his funnel and he began to feel excited. Can I borrow your time travel whistle, Finn? Percy asked eagerly. I want to go back to my great adventures. Like the time me and Emily discovered a cave with wonderful cave paintings. When I braved a stall from that mean diesel. And how I played with Doc's metal detector and broke a main water pipe. Bust my buffers. Those were the days. Absolutely not, replied Finn. Changing even the slightest thing in the past can alter a future as weird as he can imagine. Uh, Finn, called Holly from the other side of the yard. I'll be right back, he said, and he drove away. Now's my chance, Percy thought to himself. He asked his driver to put a whistle above his old one. Percy's driver agreed, unknowing that it was a gadget. Percy was even more excited. Big Storm, here I come. I will dominate this one. He was about to get it to work when suddenly there was a whistle. It was James. He puffed in to deliver his paint for Finn, but he also brought the Fat Controller. Bad news, everyone, began the Fat Controller. No, sir, I wasn't late, interrupted Percy. Right, replied the Fat Controller. Anyway, it's bad news. We make the front page of me stopping the grubby man from blowing up Natford Station on today's Sodal Gazette. What's bad about that? asked James. The fat controller pointed to the picture. I blinked. I always blinked. And as for you, Percy, yes, you were late. That steel was needed for the rescue team's training exercise, which should have started ages ago. I know, sir. I'm sorry. I got held up at a water tower thanks to Bill and Ben and... But before Percy could continue, the fat controller interrupted. You know, the scrapyard dealers are looking for useless engines, don't you? Now, next time you're late, I'll ask what they offer for a tank engine, understand? I know, sir, but... But I need you to improve tomorrow. But in the meantime, 
You will go to your shed and consider how you will improve yourself tomorrow. And I need you to improve. Because I need you to do some time against the roadworks outside Mayfreight Station. And it's important that they're out there on time. Alright, sir. Alright, don't get sticky. No wise crap. Just get going. The like the fat controller crossly. He was so cross he threw a newspaper into Percy's cab. Oh boy, you're really in for it now, Percy, chuckled James. What a shame you're not a reliable engine like me. And he puffed away, chuckling. This made Percy cross. Fine, I'll go to my shed, he grumbled. But he began to worry. The fat controller wouldn't really sell me for scrap money. Of course not, Percy, replied the driver. He's just saying that as a warning to make us alert. But I must admit, it was Bill and Ben's fault for holding us up. Come on, let's get you back to the shed. It'll be a better day tomorrow, I'm sure. Oh, interrupted Percy. I can use my time whistle to go back one minute to stop me from being late. Get me with a whistle! Percy blew his whistle loud and long. And with a flash, Percy was gone. Wow, look at that! I'm the first piece of transport to travel backwards through time! Gasped Percy. Then Lightning, Mater, and the car from Back to the Future appeared. Correction, Percy, called Mater. You're the fourth. Drat! Wrong again! Grumbled Percy. And then with a flash, Percy was at Knapford Station. It looked very dark. There wasn't much light. Then he gasped. Fenders and funnels, he cried. There were lots of different signs. Each of them kept saying the word diesel. Then suddenly, a TV screen appeared, and Diesel 10 appeared on it. Attention, Severling Underlines, he bellowed. Starting today, everyone will be forced to work in my... Sulfur Mines. I don't think we actually have a Sulfur Mines, boss, whispered Professor C quietly, who had just arrived next to Diesel 10, who now felt awkward. Uh, wait, I've been told I don't have a Sulfur mine, he said. Well, this is embarrassing. Okay, starting today, everyone will be forced to walk in my gift shop, where there's no employee discounts. <laughs> Percy gasped. He was now very frightened. Ah! He cried. I've created an evil alternative world that was fooled by Diesel 10. No! Just then, Splatter and Dodge appeared. Free citizen, cried Splatter. You're in violation of Diesel Rule 26. No tank engine with big coal bunkers can talk in slow motion while having a shiny object above its cab. Wow, that is a really specific rule, replied Percy. Prepare for pain, cried Splatter. And all of a sudden, Dodge bumped into Percy. And with a skid, Percy slid along the track, knocking the whistle off. The bump was so hard that it knocked the whistle off. Dodger's driver grabbed the whistle, and they all purred away. Oh no! cried Percy. I've got to get that whistle back! It's the only way I can stop the future! Soon, Percy arrived at Diesel Tent's palace. The building almost looked like the entrance of a diesel works. It looked very brighter, because it had more lights, and it was hogging all of Sodor's electricity. That's why most of the areas on the island looked dark and dull, almost like night. Percy puffed up to Dodge. Uh, excuse me, he said. Uh, there's a female engine with a big coal bunker there talking in slow motion with a shiny object. Thanks for the tip, citizen, replied Dodge, and rattled into the siding, with Percy following him behind. And soon enough, he arrived in Dodger's body, in Dodger's place. Uh, hey fellas, he said, great day to be a diesel engine and not a tank engine who revealed the fabric of time not to be late delivering steel. Enter fellow diesel engine, replied Splatter. Percy hastily puffed into the building. He looked around and there was Thomas, who was just a butler. Percy was surprised. How may you be of service? asked Thomas. Thomas? cried Percy, 
The name's Thompson, replied Thomas. And I'm King Diesel Tent's butler. What? asked Percy. Look, I know this may be hard to believe, but in an alternate world, you'll end in the works on the old branch line with two coaches called Annie and Clarabelle. You've gone through many adventures too. You've helped out with the opening of the new visitor center in Almond Valley Yards. You've confronted an escaped polar bear. And you got on a high speed chase with a fat controller when a grubby man kidnapped you. your invalidation of Diesel Law 56, replied Thomas, talking about alternative worlds while having a big cold bunker. Once again, super specific rule, Percy huffed to himself. But Thomas, I can get you out of here. You just gotta help me get my time travel missile back. Time travel missile, replied Thomas. Boy, you really know how to keep it weird. Security! Oh, no, no! Hello there. Leaving so soon? Ah! Meanwhile, the Supreme Royal King Diesel 10 was in the dining shed, waiting for his dinner. Chef Edward, where are my oil nuggets? He bellows. Just then, Edward bustled in. Here you are, sir, he replied. Soon the oil nuggets were unloaded, and Diesel 10 popped one into his engine. Ugh, these taste awful, he cried, just like always. I know, sir, replied Edward. It's just sometimes I lie awake at night wishing I could pull passengers instead of being a cook. I have a better idea, of Diesel Ted. How about if I throw him into a pit of fire? Suddenly, a telephone rang. Ah, oh, it's my driver, P.T. Boomer. And he rolled away to answer it. After Diesel Ted was gone, Percy rolled up alongside Edward. It's me, Percy! He cried. Nice to meet you, me, Percy, replied Edward. You know you're in violation of Diesel Law 75, which states that. Don't tell me! It's something to do with a big coal bunker! interrupted Percy. And it's very specific. Listen, where I came from, you're an entity that pulls passengers on whole freight and gone through many adventures too. You helped out at Farmer McCall's harvest to prove James that you're not that slow. You ran Thomas's branch line while he was away at being mended. And you helped Scruffy, Gordon and the China Clay twins when they had trouble with Farmer McCall's cows. Tell that to the ant, fire ants. Replied Edward. Security! Later, Percy kept himself hidden around the back shed, while in the main shed, Diesel Tem was having a meeting with Professor C, Splatter, and James as their secretary. Okay, Secretary James, read back the minutes from our last evil meeting. <sighs> Sight James. Minute 1, you dropped Dark in the shark tank. Minute 2 through 30, Dark screamed while you played Crazy Apes. Wow! Group meeting, replied Diesel 10. Now go make a hundred copies of these evil documents around the back shed. Yes, sir, James groaned and puffed off with a flatbed. He was about to puff into the shed when he bumped into something and began to push him backwards. Out of a hidden warehouse came James, then the truck, and last of all, there was Percy. James, it's you! Percy cried. Look, I know you don't recognise me, but in a different reality world, young engine who's conceited about his paintwork has been a big show off and has gone on any adventures. You ran over a cliff and crashed into Chick's Hit's house. You took Peter's rocket car to a Star Trek convention. And you helped Finn McMissile to stop Professor C from being a kick, but secret agent.
then Percy's driver showed two pictures. And this is Dudley Puppy, Percy continued. He is the secret agent dog that was inspired by your adventure with Finn. And you see that green tank in that other picture? That's Graham. You hated that engine, as well as that tough puppy TV show. That's ridiculous, huffed James. There isn't a final burn in my body, now go away! Hi, Gigi! Percy had crashed into the barrier, alongside the bat shed. Then there was trouble. Edward arrived with Thomas, while Diesel 10 pulled behind with Splatter. Aha! Got you, little, little green tank engine! You'll make very fine scrap indeed. Get him ready, Splatter! Oh boy! So Percy was loaded onto the flatbed and Splatter coupled up. You have to believe me! Percy cried to the engines. In my world, you're all really useful engines and having a big cold bunker is okay! He cried as he was being towed away to the scrapyard. What is he on about? asked Thomas. I don't know, of James Hill. Then he stopped. He noticed a new paper falling on the ground. The three engines looked at it. Look, gosh, James, there's a newspaper article all about us. Pictured capturing the grubby man, our Sir Topham Hat, Percy the Small Engine, James the Red Splendid Engine, Edward the Wise Blue Engine, continued Edward, and Thomas the Tank Engine. Bust my buffers, cried Thomas. Percy must right. We must go and rescue him. Yes, agreed James. But hang on, why is that fat man that keep blinking in that picture? Meanwhile, the diesels took Percy to the large smelting shed. Diesel 10 broadcast it onto the TV screen back at Knapford Station, where it's still dark. Attention gloving losers, he bellowed. It's now time to play everyone's favourite new game show, Steamy Steamy. Here's how the game show works. I'll ask our contestant the question, and before he can answer it, I'll launch him into the pool of molten lava. Bye bye, Percy. <laughs> Percy looked up. Above him was a huge grabber. This engine's not for scrapping, shouted Percy. The grabber wasn't listening. But just as he was about to grab hold of him, it stopped. There stood Thomas and James. What are you guys doing here? cried Diesel 10. We are through with being your secretary, butler and nugget chef of James. Yeah, agreed Thomas. And we're going to save that big bunker tank engine get his magic watch and start our own railway and they bump Steasel 10 and Splatter into the lava pit Arrgh! they all cried as they splashed into some burning molten lava great teamwork guys Percy whistled but where's Edward oh he's gone to stop Diesel 10's power now everything's back to normal now everyone's got their electricity back just like it used to be, explained Thomas. Well, that's good. Now let's go get my whistle back. Soon all the engines found the whistle. As Percy's driver fitted onto Percy, Percy felt confused. So what made you guys finally believe me? He asked. We found this newspaper, explained James. Thanks for helping us realise what we are really meant to be with our lives. Yes, agreed Thomas. Thank you. You do make us feel like a really useful engine. And you are really useful as well, old friend. Trembling traps! That is so great! Soon Percy found himself back at the special workshop. He was tired and worn out. The sun had already risen up. He puffed forward into the station yard and looked around. He wanted to know if everything's back to normal. Just then, Thomas puffed up alongside Percy. Good morning, Percy, he tooted. What's my name? What kind of sky? What job do you work at? What? But crying out loud, tell me! You're Percy. The sky is blue, and I'm on my own branch line. 
Yes! Everything's back to normal! What are you talking about? Asked James. Have you been opening to the shed door with your face again? Asked the fat controller. Yeah, Percy, you weren't even at your shed last night. What's going into you? Nothing. Nothing at all. Let's just say I had a crazy dream. And Percy reversed back to Finn. Finn, take Miss Whistle back, he said. I've learnt my lesson. I'm never going to mess with time again. But you are still late with taking some time against from the yard, Percy. If he'd have left early, he could have done it already. On second thought, replied Percy. And they, and he was gone in a flash again. Now what's that tank engine up to? Great! Now I have to do is deliver some trucks to the Mayfray and... Then, he saw the other engines around the sheds. Uh, chuckled Henry. Shut up, Mavis! Huffed Thomas. Shut up yourself! Huffed Mavis. Quiet! Said Lisa. Ugh, grand Brian. They're, they're even more crazy than at that time. I forgot what came after G. Huffed Yiddley. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Blah, 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 blah. Standing here with the stupid Stevies. Waiting for the song to end. Season 50 was so bad. Now I know my ABCs. I'll damn mommy, I can fix it, I hope. Oh, here we go again. Oh, my aching axles.